All right. Today is going to be a good day. There was a deal going on at Acme Tools for three-piece pack out, $139, free shipping, no tax. I'm not quite sure where to start. I guess we can start with the big one here. So who doesn't want some more pack out? Got the D-handled jigsaw as well. This Milwaukee pack out toolbox will be set up for my cordless reciprocating saws, specifically the M18 Super Sawzall and Hacksaw. I also have in here some Diablo blades along with a hand tool that takes those blades as well, which comes in handy. And then I have a high output 8.0 battery. So what I did is I have two layers of Kaizen foam 30 millimeters stacked on top of each other. I am debating whether or not to put a third layer, but I think two should work. And I cut out a template so it makes that cutting of that foam a lot easier. And we'll see how this process works here. Once you get your layout the way that you want it, what we'll do is take a sharp knife or marker and then just kind of trace around each object, just marking it slightly. And then you'll take everything out and cut it to however deep you want it. I traced around the hacks all using this and here's what I got. You can see the outline. And so what we'll do is we'll just take this knife and just cut deeper and follow the outline that I have. So now we just plow these layers out as deep as we want and we'll see how good we did. So this is what it looks like after you cut through some of the layers. I definitely have to go deeper, but as you can see, I'm well on my way to a decent fit here for the hacksaw. I'm going to switch over my cutting to this folding jab saw. It actually does pretty well at cutting this and it's easier to get to the proper depth. Because of the way that this is cut, I decided to use some extra strong multi-purpose glue. And so you can see how we have a flap here uh, that I glued down and here the layers I glued down so when you pull the battery out the layers don't separate as easily and then here uh, this little flap here I glued down as well and so we will let this dry overnight and see how it turns out. Alright so this is how it turned out we have all of our cutouts for the different pieces and you can see that after the glue dried, it's holding up quite well here, holding that little piece in there. Uh, it's holding this piece down, and it's also holding this flap here. Let's put each piece in one at a time. And so the hacksaw fits quite nicely, and we can also remove it quite nicely. The 8.0 battery, fits in nice, can be removed nicely as well. My reciprocating blades, I actually can stack them too high. So I have these blades here, which I kind of roll into the bottom. And then my Diablo blades can go on top and they can be removed pretty easily as well. You don't necessarily need the finger grooves. This folding jab saw that takes the reciprocating blades goes in quite nicely. And you can also take it out quite nicely as well. Fits nice and snug. Finally, we have the super sawzall. And so this will fit in there like so. And I could also take it out if needed to. Um, I actually decided to cut out all of the foam on the top because it was just kind of flimsy and you don't necessarily need it. And so this one's really easy to get out because you have the, uh, the hollow handle here that you can just grab onto. And it puts a little bit of extra downward pressure here on the rest. Uh, in terms of keeping everything nice and tight. 
I decided to put the foam only two layers high. Uh, number one, I can use that foam on a different box instead of wasting it. Uh, and number two, I just don't think I really need to go that high to hold everything in a, in a decent spot. So you would be okay with going with the 57 millimeter foam if you wanted to, at least for these boxes. But the 30 millimeter foam provides a little bit more flexibility in case I wanted to stack a third layer or you know odd numbers of layers instead of just going in increments of 57 millimeters. I like the varying degrees of power in this kit. So everything's uniform, it all takes the same blades, but if hand power can get it done, there's places where this is nice and compact and I don't necessarily need to grab the battery operated saws. But the Hacksaw does most of the work, um, but there are situations where this Super Sawzall is going to be needed. For example, I'm working on this kitchen right now. There used to be a pantry right here, and I basically had to cut it off of that wall, uh, and it was secured uh, very heavily, and the Hacksaw was not going to cut it. And so for that sort of serious demolition, uh, you're going to need the bigger super sawzall and so it was this pantry was then moved so it, it was cut basically right there um, and you know over on the other wall and then i just swung it around and attached it over to this wall uh, in this kitchen remodel finally i hope that this video helped you out and gave you some ideas for what to do with your toolboxes if it did help you make sure to smash that like button also be sure to subscribe because I have more videos like this with other toolboxes coming out as well as other construction related videos. So we will see you on the next one.